Good evening everyone and welcome to Trolls Pilot's stream tonight. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, Icelandic horses that are swaybacked and how to regain the basic gates, which is sometimes pretty difficult with Icelandic horses. However, this of course has uh, this works for all horses, get yeah. their back to function better and uh, the gates will either be better or regain depending on where you yeah. started of course. You can look at this as sort of an extreme version of uh, what's happening with many horses when they lose their stability through the back. Mm -hmm. And the, the Icelandic horses are um, more prone to this problem perhaps uh, they, because they have these other gates as well. The tilt and the and the and the pace, yep. Um, and uh, in other horse breeds, uh, we say that um, now the horse is broken when it has like pace like walk or, or the the beat is um is wrong. So then, if we if we make the horse connect through the back, then the problem goes away. Yeah. Um, and the same happens with the Icelandic horse as well. If they are, especially when they're trained too much in the in the competition gates, and you don't, um, you have to consider the basic gates as well and do some basic, like ground training, uh, even if you're doing competition work. We're not against the competition uh, gates in the Icelandic horses. We have many. Um, good uh, riders that are, ri are riding Icelandic horses but we help them um, can, like regaining or keeping the good trot uh, canter and walk yep um, it's important I think to uh, to put in a thing here that uh, that's kind of cool what we're going to see today happened over the course of was it one or two days two days two days so there's not much um, tissue change if you follow my drift. So the musculature, uh, the ligaments, the tendons, bones obviously do not change much or at all during a couple of days. A little bit maybe, but it's probably not going to be a lot of change in that. So what happens here is most likely that the nervous system changes. And this is an important point because quite often, or let me spool that back a little bit, it is very difficult to measure that the central nervous system has changed. So <clears throat> if you think about it in, uh, from this perspective of, uh, say, a veterinarian, uh, the veterinarian can't come to you and measure whether the nerve, central nervous system does its job properly. So that's not the veterinarian's job to take care of. It would be uh, the trainer's job mm. to have a look at that. Mm. So, and, and we're not saying that the nervous system is broken. What we're saying is we have to retrain it in order to manage some of these changes. Mm. When you're talking about the nervous system, it's mostly the, the motoric um, part of the nervous system. How it yeah, can, that's what we're talking about. How to control about the, the, the movement. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, it might be related to pain, but it's also really difficult to ask horses about that. Sometimes you can kind of feel it or you can see that their eyes are a little bit look less in pain. You know, all of you horse people know what, what, what that feels like, but you probably also know that it's really difficult to properly kind of fasten that thing down and say, this is less pain than that. So what we're... What we did was that we had like um, four lessons uh, during one weekend, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, th that this is a horse that has been a broad mare and um, it's often more difficult with broad mares to tra train them again because they're, they get to, uh, often get broken in, in the back and broken. It, it, it so, sounds very dramatic, but it's like, you know, the connection in the back. It's just like we women as well. When we have had children, you often feel that you're, you're sore in the lower back. The, the abs muscles are weaker because they have been stretched 
they have been stretched very very far towards the maximum mm -hmm. of their mm -hmm. capabilities also of course uh, the <clears throat> the hormonal change during pregnancy uh, mm. makes sure that all the all the ligaments are stretched or loosened up as much as possible yeah. to to make sure uh, the foal or, or the baby can pass through properly and uh, this is something that you you can't influence that yourself either as part of making it easier or as part of r repairing it making it making them shorten up into a position where they can actually support your body again so th you have no influence over that happening mm. and that means that in the rebuild time when the ligaments are shortening up again you will have to pay extra care to make sure the movement is good in order to not produce a problem mm. <clears throat> and it's a good um it's a good thing to um to use this um mere because it, it when when they have had falls like that and you can see the the problem gets more extreme or more exaggerated not so you know uh, but you, it's easy to see it's yeah. uh it's not extreme but it's it's easier to see the difference yeah because uh, when you have a practiced eye you can see the difference in quite subtle uh, changes but here um it's important it's difficult to see this the a big difference in just two days but here you can actually see the difference Yep. So shall we just uh, jump Let's into it? Jump into it. Let's see, see the first list like uh, 9636. 96, and the, I think that's just the walk. And, and, and this rider has been training with us before. And now she's showing how she used to ride. You can see that she's wobbly in the, in, in the midsection. Um, and uh, the horse is walking as um, she's not uh, been training this horse uh, at our clinics but she's been training her at home um, with the things that she learned the last time she was here yeah <clears throat> or oh, I was there sorry yeah well mm. right so just to have a um, an idea of how it, how it looks uh, before we did anything yeah um, so should we run an analysis of this while we watch we can it do that? yeah yeah please do okay so um what i see when i look at this is that first it looks like two different horses or three even so the hind quarters look like they're kind of disconnected mm. uh, and you can see that the sway back as as the uh, heading said uh, this horse has a pretty um, you can easily see that it's got a really sway back and the, the further back part is really sway back uh, the next next two things I look at at the same time is one, it looks to me like the knee angle doesn't really change no, it stays in, in, more or less the same throughout the, the, the stride the knee and the hind leg the knee in the hind leg, uh, yes. The stifle. <clears throat> stifle, sorry. Mm, yeah, I think, yeah. I and, think it's... But I look at that at the same time as I look at... It looks like kind of the whole the whole hindquarters look like they almost shake when when yeah. one leg hits the I ground and takes yeah. off. Uh, and sometimes you, we say that you can see that the muscle works, but that's not what's going on here. It just looks loose. It looks like a it looks like a, like a shock impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, mm. uh, the, like I've noticed this lately because I'm not in uh, in a very good form. Uh, well, I'm in a very nice shape, round, as it were. So when I jump up and down, I can feel myself jiggle, <laughs> uh, especially if I stiffen my legs. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of the same. I'm not saying that the horse is fat. That's not what I'm what I'm coming to, coming for. But you, you know, can if, jiggle the muscles if you have as well. stiff, <laughs> if you have stiff joints and musculature that doesn't do anything actively, it'll jiggle like that. Mm. Sometimes you can see when the horse walks, you can see that the neck muscles. On the top 
of the neck go boom, boom, every stride. Mm. But that looks ordered. This looks disorderly. Yeah. So what I, I look at the kind of straight hind legs with the kind of jiggly and the sway back. Ah, this doesn't look amazing at the moment. Mm -hmm. This has to change. That's what I would say. So uh, the next one is uh, with a bit of trot as well. All right. Uh, but do you think it's a good idea to look at how she looked um, uh, without a saddle in the big be beginning in yeah. the still? Yes. Let's so, look at the still picture of without the saddle. It's like the ninety six twenty four. Messing with our technician today. Yeah. All right. So sway back actually at the very furthest back end it might even look like when the horse is just standing there it's slightly better than when he's walking <laughs> yeah it, it's um we haven't positioned the horse in any way it's just um this is the standard way. standard parking we mode just to stop and she stopped like this yeah and she stops with her elbows like underneath her yeah so she's supporting Carrying. herself on the front leg. Absolutely. But it also looks like the the kind of from the mid and forwards on the back, it looks kind of flat and hard to me. Do yeah. you see what I'm talking about? It might be just the just the the fur, but I don't think so. You can see the underneck as well. Underneck, yeah. It's mm. fairly prominent and short ish. Mm. And the belly is kind of proper dropped. Mm. So you can imagine the whole rib cage has tilted um, so that the furthest back part of the rib cage has dropped towards the ground, while the front part is sort of up. Yeah. So you can imagine that this horse has had folds in her belly. Oh, well, it, yeah. So yeah, that is and that's obviously the reason why she ended up like that. Yes, many horses uh, end up like this without being. Uh, pregnant so it's a uh, it's a good example so let's uh, try the next vid video it's like 96 37 always interesting this to to look at these videos because i i normally don't watch the videos beforehand mm -hmm. because we want me to have a fresh take on it And this is the trot. Uh, all right. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, and the rider knows that this is. Uh, she asked us if we could help help her with this horse. Yeah. And uh, I said, yeah, if you come, I, we can take the videos. <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> and so we got a good de deal there because we needed to study this. We need to study this. We need to study this for a few laps. I need to. I need to study this uh, a little bit before I want to say anything about it. I. I have an idea here. I'm just going to check if it's right. But you see that the rider knows how to do the half holds. Yeah. So she's doing a good job with uh, making her her seat light, and um, and stretching the horse. Can you? And when she does that, it, it, the the horse is a little more rhythmic. Yep. So uh, I was trying to see if there was a connection. Uh, there obviously is, but to see if I could. Uh, say when and when it's clear what the connection is between how the horse moves, how the abs are activated, how the back is... This is clear pace, isn't it? it, it yes, and now it's trot. Now it's a little trot. So but not stretching. quite. Yeah, so when she's stretching, it's a little bit more of a trot. Mm. Uh, but also the way the hindquarters work... It looks like they almost look more connected when it's like closer to tilt or pacing. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this is... Uh, I, I like to... I kind of like to liken it to 
to canter canter mm-hmm. or trot for many riders who are not familiar with the pacing or or the tilt um we can um i was just thinking what's tilt in english but that's tilt isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Is so it, oh without the slash <laughs> yeah but you know how how at the canter the horse sort of brings his hindquarters more under and looks more connected through the loin through the lumbar back mm-hmm. uh, and in the trot the horse looks looser often uh, through the back so mm-hmm. the back doesn't look as dropped and at the canter as it does at the trot mm. you, yeah do, true, true. do you recognize that yeah. sensation mm. All right, so <clears throat> you can see that here. Some sometimes it looks like the hindquarters are connected. Yeah, but yeah, that does not that. coincide with the trot. Mm, hmm. Because the, in hmm. the trot, in the trot, the back has to carry weight. It has to carry weight, because but it has yeah. to be loose. Yeah, because of the diagonality, mm. it has to be more loose in more dimensions. Have, in the in, in, it's a more complex movement. Yeah, and the horse needs to have this little flight through the air <laughs> yes yeah. that that as well and this uh, and you we, can see that in this see... in this uh, video we'll see more videos i suppose yeah. mm-hmm. but you can see that it changes sometimes now the horse stretched proper down at the beginning the back lifted for like a split second then it dropped again and then uh, we're screwing around with different paces here as you see it's a little bit of pace a little bit of uh, trot uh, a little bit of both at the same time uh, but still you get this feeling the whole horse looks like every movement is a bit shocky. Yeah, and you can Except see. when the horse stretches, it looks yeah. kind of that everything slows down for a yeah. for a little bit. Mm. And that means that there's more connection that uh, when everything looks like it slows down instead of looking like yeah. shaky. And you can see that's when important she's, when she's um try when she's ten, tensing up and and doing this um strange uh, pace like thing yeah um and the, the icelandic people they have uh, names for that as well um, i don't know what it's called in english but you can see that when she's tensing up and doing that all kinds of uh, legs all over the place mm-hmm. then you can see that she's using her underneck yeah hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely yeah uh, and an interest and uh, i want to i want to dwell a little bit on this this uh, trot canter thing that i was talking about uh because uh, if the horse is pacing, he can be the horse can be rigid through the back, meaning it's a very simple thing to do for the central nervous system. You just tense it up and don't change it. Mm. Like you say, co- you, you often say about about the central nervous system. Sometimes it has just decided that this muscle is a bone. Yeah. It's not going to change its length at all. It just it's a constant. going to stay. Yeah, it's, it's going much to stay easier constant. for the system to yep. treat. A one muscle is a constant instead of a variable. Yes. Mm. And in trot, the movement needs to be much more variable. Mm. And it needs to allow the um, the ligament uh, systems to interact with the muscular systems mm-hmm. and instead the of just the, of. the muscle just blocking mm. and staying in the same thing so that so that the other muscles can just move and, and don't yep. care at all. Mm. This is very important because what we are going to show throughout this video is only changes through the central nervous system. Yeah, because the muscles are not strengthened, but I'm doing some untangling and then I'm talking directly to the nervous system. Talking to it, yes. Mm-hmm. So is... And it might be, many, many people think that I, then I'm also doing something to the, um, the fascia i don't know i don't know no uh, this is um, it's very difficult to know whether you're doing anything to fascia or or not uh, or even to musculature or not but, um, but what's what's quite likely is that if you were to take a tissue sample before and after you couldn't find a difference no i don't know but, probably but, not. you know if you're talking to the, we don't know what the nervous system is doing um how i think my belief is that the, the motoric nervous system is controlling like everything in the movement also the fascia probably yeah uh, and uh, 
many of the people who are doing like therapeutic um, treatment, they're they're talking about the hardware. The, where is the nerves? Where is the muscles? Where is the fascia? But you have to talk to the nervous system as well, to to find to to give the nervous system new input input new input that's new the key input, here new measuring points yep so let's go into the next video that is a 9638 now i've got four videos of what we did with, with her on the neck this is going to be interesting 9638 i think it's the third it's third a third from video says, from the start. Yeah, and we can take 39 as well. Or start with that one. Yeah, 39. Yeah, let's 38. take that. Go for 39. Then. Yeah, no problem. It doesn't, we don't have to take all of those four. You see, uh, what I'm doing is that um, I'm finding points in the neck and I'm pressing with my thumb and when I'm when she she reacts every time I am hitting the right spots and, the, and these trigger points are different um on different horses and of the same horse in different situations it depends on where the tension is and i can what i can see what, what, when she re reacts like that i know that i'm at the right spot i begin i always begin further further uh, up and closer to the the ears um but the um, and that is the the other video where I um the the other video that we didn't find the start yeah the first video shows uh working closer to the ears and this is kind of second row yeah so it's like um and we can say see, what what do you do I, I'm doing what I say I press I use my thumb I find the trigger points where the horse's horse reacts and I just keep it keep my finger there until it the point the tension get loosens. All right. What's a trigger point? Can you just say a yeah, little bit about it? That is an interesting thing. It's a difficult question, I know. I didn't, yeah, didn't mean to put you on the spot. Because there is a really. lot of discussion about what is a trigger point. And many people think that it is not, there isn't a, such a thing as trigger points. Um, they, I've got a book with all kinds of medical definitions of what a trigger point is but since I, I I my education is a cybernetic one um I'm I'm thinking that it's um it's a point where the the regulation like the nervous system is vulnerable because um now it's a point where you could talk to the nervous system and tell it that you're you're tense here and then you're you're not you this muscle is not doing its job. Can it's I? another way to, to look at it. It's looking at um at the problem from the software angle and not from the hardware angle. Um it's difficult to explain. Absolutely. I was thinking uh, you said where it's vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, and and i was thinking it's that's little... why it's painful yeah the pain comes from the brain not from the muscle yeah so yeah the brain tells the brain or asks the brain is there something bad going on here mm -hmm. and then brain goes uh yeah. hunting for some answers right mm -hmm. uh, but this thing about vulnerability it's an important point that i wanted to just roll back into a little bit um where we are supposed to sit in the saddle is on the point on the horse's back where you have the most influence. Yep. So you could call that vulnerable, right? That's the kind of vulnerability we're talking oh, about. Yeah, yeah. However, yeah. that is both mechanical, that, or that is definitely the mechanically 
most uh, vulnerable point, the one that is easier to move in all directions or something like that. That's the yeah. idea of that point. Yeah. And that is also perhaps like a trigger point idea added to that. It can be. I'm not saying it is. I'm just... I was just curious because yeah. this is so we have on one side we have this mechanical idea and on the other side we have the idea that there are kind of focal points or whatever you want to call it where the I think where the I think control I understand system. where you're going. Uh, it, it's like yeah when you, we're riding mm -hmm. we're talking to the nervous system yep. and not talking to the muscles. No. So if we are if we do, we're talking about natural aids, for instance, in one of our videos, we are, you know, we are using our weight and we're pressing with our legs and then we're talking to the nerves. When I do this, you're doing that. No, no, then, I go no, stone faced <laughs> almost. I, I can see that. <laughs> Go ahead. And and um, this is something that you're you're programmed to, to react like that. Yep. And that is how, uh, how writing actually works. It's like you can't, you, you're not talking to the muscle in the hind leg. You're talking to the brain via the, the nerves. And, and then you're communicating. When, when something is locked, as we have talked about in that, this horse, the big problem was the underneck. Yep. Because if the... If the muscles in the abs, in in in, in you know the under underline, is too weak, so everything has collapsed down there, in, the horse needs to use his underneck to lift the front legs. Yeah, and and then when uh, when the um, underneck gets too tired, um the the neck the neck muscles when they get too much work when the muscle gets too much much work. It just stiffens up, yep. because when it's getting like like bone, it's not even it's not getting tired anymore. And to in a, to be tell the nervous system that you know this muscle needs to start doing something again and not being being so stiff, then you need to go. And uh, then I am using that this technique, and it's not. It's not. Um, you can't do anything wrong. You're just pressing on a muscle. Like yeah. this. It's not. It's not hard. And I'm not a strong woman. So I'm not able to, to press like really. Uh, pressing on nerves or uh, closing a blood vessel or something. No. <laughs> and you you can on this on these muscles in the horse's neck. is not dangerous to try. And if you see that the horse reacts. You can see that, yeah. And I'm I'm positioning her to the inside a little so that she can relax the muscles on the inside. Yeah. And if we see, look at the next video, it's like ninety six forty. And I'm doing it while the horse is moving. That's more complex for the horse then, isn't it? Yeah, because then I'm saying all while the nervous system is controlling all this, I'm saying, do you remember this muscle? Mm -hmm. You do you remember that it isn't intelligent to to define this as a bone while you're walking? Mm -hmm. You have enough bones in your body. You need this as a yeah. muscle. So I'm just I'm just poking at that muscle, and not not massaging because you you don't want to like the, pre I, pressure the horse into doing something. You just want to tell the horse that if, to feel that muscle. Mm -hmm. To feel, to be aware of the muscle, the way, uh, be aware that this muscle is tense. Yep. And you can see that she loosens up quite a bit. And then... And now you can actually see that the the movements are slower. You yeah. see that slower, mm -hmm. more, more, rhythmic. more connected rhythmic movement of the horse. Obviously there is no rider on, I'm not blind. I do understand <laughs> that that might be a difference. Yeah. But but then you now but she's that's stretching. yes. The saddle moves different as well. Yeah. yeah. Mia says that the saddle moves differently. Absolutely. And that means when the saddle moves differently, then you can then you can something has changed in the back. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see the uh, the next one. Is that ninety six forty one? Yes. Yeah. And here we had to take a video of this because she was like, "Oh dear me, that was good." 
and she's closing her her eyes and she just stood there. It looks to me as if she's uh, not opposed to this. And you can see, no, she's not opposed. I'm not <laughs> forcing her. No, she's actually leaning into me. And you see, I remember that I took my, I deliberately took my arm away. Yeah. From her her rein. Yeah, yeah. like that. Because I'm still holding my finger on the trigger point. Mm-hmm. And she's leaning into my finger just because it's so good. And sometimes she breathes her back up. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's interesting, eh? Because her underneck is is so tight that it it's it's um what's it called? It's um inhibiting. Inhibiting the top line. Yeah. Because they it acts as an inhibitor for the top line. Yeah. <laughs> and when this happens, the horses <laughs> actually come to me during the lesson. They just bring the they bring the rider over and they have to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they do that, they come and bump their nose at me. Yeah. It's so satisfying actually. So yeah. It's a um this was soothing to watch actually. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> This is yeah. if this isn't slow TV, I don't know what is. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So I, I I can I could stand there for a long time actually because it was uh, it's very rewarding for me as well. But yeah. um um yeah, and I, you, I I guess we haven't yeah, you didn't find the first one, Ivan? Uh, no, I didn't. That's okay, fine. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I can I can show you. Uh, pfft. I don't know if it's possible to show it on, on a human, but you start right really up here. Up here, you start. Behind, Behind the ear. And then you go downwards and downwards and downwards and downwards. And that you do you can do that on yourself as well. It it has helped helped me a lot. That is why I started doing this on the horses. Helps me too. Yeah, and many other people. So we've been doing this for like six years and practicing it yeah. on on horses and people. Seven even yeah, even musicians. Yeah. Um all kinds of uh, sport people, karate instructors, um and they've got a lot of help from this technique and it's very rewarding to to work with and it's not difficult to learn. And it's not dangerous. You're not you're not clicking or pulling or pushing anything, and you're not massaging. You're just holding and pointing to. It's potent medicine, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so let's it... see now how what's working. Yeah, I did. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, that's all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's potent, potent medicine. So if you get really good at it, you can get huge diff- changes. And sometimes people become dizzy or, and lots of other, you know, little ailments. Yeah, that is because their nervous system has, if, if the change is big, you need to take it easy because... Get sick and throw up. Yeah. <laughs> you, as I said, you can get sick and throw up. It's just like being seasick. So you must be c- careful and not do too much. Yep. Um, and then we have the um, 9643. Let's see if there a, a, has been a change after this Knutlas thing or the untangling p- part. I think this is afterwards at least. <laughs> and now she's doing the half halts, I think. Yeah. She's doing an ordinary half halt. Because, you know, it, the the habit is still the same, even though things are loosening up. But you see that she's able to stretch more. But it's still a little pace-like, isn't it? It's pace-like. Uh, not all the time, though. And, uh, and the movements are much calmer and much softer. Mm-hmm. We don't have this... Uh, there's not as much of that jiggling. No, there is true. still some, mm. and th- you get the feeling that the stifles and hocks actually bend just ever so slightly. Yeah, and then now, it, for instance. Yeah. But then she loses it and drops into the 
paste like thing again and then you can't see it and then she needs to take a half halt again and then the horse tenses a little up but then she releases and then the horse is able to find its balance mm -hmm. and that is uh, the whole thing about half halts in the beginning um, when you do that, uh, when you, you know, pull the reins or you try to to stop the horse a little, or, mm -hmm. um, then it needs to be you need to be a little coarse in in the, your aids, and then the horse will lose his rhythm completely. But then you release, and then the horse will find some balance a, a little more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can see in the in the in the comments um the rider and the owner that we see here she tells yeah she had arrived at Trollspeile an hour and a half ago never been here before or met Hanna and there was lots of unfamiliar horses around and she almost fell asleep yeah <laughs> that was really fun so let's see the next one, can we do that? Yeah, let's go because for the next. We have many, many, many videos. now, isn't it? Yeah, 96, yeah. Yeah. And this shaking of the head, that is really a symptom of... Oh, then she's snorting as well. Yeah. That is... And then she she lost her rhythm again. <laughs> yeah. That's so typical. Because this is... um, They, they need to be allowed to struggle. Yeah. And to to find when you find your rhythm, it's you, you you're not finding it straight away. You need to do something wrong, and then you're like, oh, I'll stumble like that, and yeah, and then oh wow, and then yeah, yeah. You struck they there you go. You she snorts, and then she's stretching more and more, mm -hmm. and when she's stretching her neck like that, she's stretching her back as well. And then the back comes up, the hind quarters are able to come under in a better way. Yeah. So, but it needs to happen in this, in this order. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, like uh, Lot said. Mm. Calm. En avant. En avant. Droit. droit. <laughs> so first, calm. Mm. Calm and relaxed needs to come first. If the horse is just stressing along, nothing good is happening. Well. Mm. Something good could be happening, but not much. Um, Come and then forwards and then straight. Yeah, but it has to be in that order. And now it's still calm. That's the important thing. Yeah. You see now how the tail moves completely different from what it did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you see this slow wagging of the mane. Mm -hmm. All the movements are much slower and calmer. Mm -hmm. That's an important point. First, calm. First, mm -hmm. calm. All right. The whole expression of the horse is much more happier. She's much mm. more outgoing and relaxed. Yeah. The whole yeah expression mm. of her is totally different. Good. It's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? It's kind of it's difficult to put your finger on exactly those all the little things that make up that image, mm. but the mm. feeling is that the horse is happier. So and she's happier, and then you can see even if the the rhythm is still a little clumsy. Mm -hmm. And she's she's relaxing and when yep. she's relaxing she's able to find her rhythm yep. because if the horse is tense you never get any change mm -hmm. uh, let's take the next one I agree mm, 45 I think it is yeah and now she's stretching even more I think like yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah and when she's stretching it change it looks different through the whole neck and you can see that there's the top of the neck is now sort of semi-active and then she loses it again yeah and then she's stretching and yeah. then it becomes more four beat yeah you can see the seat, the rhythm of the seat of the rider is changing as well Absolutely. yeah it's much yeah. calmer through the midsection and, and it uh, moves through the hip oh. yeah the hip joint is moving more and that is yeah yeah you can like see her actually lifting the rider up yeah yeah when she's able to you, you, but you yeah, can yeah. see her lifting. yeah and then when when the horse is lifting her back like this the 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 rider is able to move her hip joints more yeah because in the in the, sometimes you want to to just encourage the horse by moving your seat more um but it's difficult when the horse's back is down. Then it's it doesn't, and then it's just like, 
bothering the horse. But now she's actually able to just do it. Or, yeah, then now she did a, a half halt and she let go and the horse was really stretching. Yeah, and even better. And there and you go to walk. Better. Then you, that was almost a, a, a good walk. Let's try this next Yeah, one. absolutely. This 46. It, are you it was saying no, this? No. Uh, and we haven't even trotted yet. <laughs> but you know, you have to start, you have to like cr- crawl before you can walk. Isn't that what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, like literally, and walk before yeah. you can run. Yeah, walk before you can run. And now we're starting to try to trot. And the rider is really good at just sitting still, not interfering with the horse. But you can see that she's trying desperately to shuffle along with her front legs. And it doesn't work the way it used to do because my underneck is not the tense as it used to be. So she's trying to tense up in the underneck and do that. But the rider is really good and doing her half holes and letting the horse stretch. And she's also... Trying to lift her seat out of the saddle yes. as good as possible mm-hmm. to allow the horse to move. And the horse is still, of course, struggling. Yeah. And it's just like, it's day two. Is, is this day two? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing because she's not wearing the same clothes as she was in the beginning. All <laughs> right. Yeah, but I think that it's... Um, so look at the back. Look at the saddle. back here. Mm-hmm. Look at the back now. All right, this is a thing that happens quite often. It, it looks like it's almost even swayer. Because yeah. we need we need relaxed first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and then we have to restart everything from relaxed. Mm-hmm. And now you'll see that she starts moving and she goes in and out of being much more connected through the through the um, lumbar spine. You can see the abs are proper on almost all the time yeah it hasn't got that broken line no. underneath no but yeah that's also true yeah much much softer line underneath mm. and sometimes the back drops so much that the rider is almost unable to keep her seat light yeah yeah and i'm and i i'm not trying to say that she's doing a bad job she's doing a great job but oh. it's that difficult when the when the whole saddle tilts back like it does here sometimes yeah. it's really difficult to find your balance yeah but this is really good work and there's much more bend in the knee and the st- and the stifle and the hock now mm. than there was in the beginning much yeah. more yeah isn't that true Yes, yes, and but this is a very good illustration of how it, um, how the horse is still trying, even though it's his she's stretching. Yeah, she's still trying to use just the front legs to do the propeller work. The impulsion comes from the front leg, yeah. not the hand. hand yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's of course not the correct way. No, that um, is not what we call impulsion, but it's not, the 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 propellant needs to come from somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a thing here that is, I think it's important to to notice. You can see that it looks like the abs are on almost all the time. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then you got a point because yeah. uh, because it it shouldn't <laughs> be all the time. It shouldn't be it should shouldn't be, be swinging in the rhythm of the yeah. horse like a pulse mm-hmm. going through, and it isn't. But the reasoning for that, in my opinion, is that when you haven't done a thing ever, your uh, coordination when you try try doing it is yeah. absolutely horrible. And the first thing you get it to do is first. on. Mm. Or off. Mm. You can watch a kid with a spoon on and <laughs> off. That's the only move. But and, and then yeah. you get get softer movements. Yeah, after and then a you while. have to get, be patient. And yeah, yeah. try yeah. once more, dear. You perhaps try again. Yeah. More porridge everywhere, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And first day, but the second lesson. Second lesson, right? Yeah. So I'm onto it then. <laughs> because you had another saddle in the on the. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we've got more, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. The next one. Uh, um, now I'm out of um, touch with what number it is. I, I, is it 47? No, I don't know. This 47? One. It's this one. Which, what, which one was it? It's 47. Yeah. So uh, the problem is that when 
when we're working like this, the hindquarters are not used to doing that kind of work and not the back either. Now you can see that it's actually fluctuating a little on the top side of the, of the hindquarters. You see that? Flop, 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 flop. It's trying to do something. Yep. But it's really hard for those hindquarters to lift the whole, the back of the horse, the rider, and the and the front, uh, like the, the rib cage mm -hmm. out of the shoulders. Yep. And the, this, uh, this uh, I have to say something about this exercise because it's something that is really good for the the, the Icelandic horses because so, often it's almost impossible to get an Icelandic horse to trot on a circle if they have lost their uh, their trot. Um, and then it's a good idea to just take them on a circle, uh, whatever kind of trot or gait they end up with. At some and speed. Then, uh, at some speed that is more than walk. Yeah. And then after they have sort of d done that for some uh, some rounds, you get along the... the the long side of the arena and it, uh, with some energy and they will often find their trot. But this horse didn't um, do that. You could see that she tenses up and she becomes uh, more unrhythmic actually. So she's, she's rather, rather good at doing it on a circle. You can see that her hindquarters are starting to, to work a little better, isn't it? Uh, I would say they are, yes, mm. absolutely. You can, it, you can see more different muscles in the hindquarters. Yeah. Uh, still, the ab thing is just on. Mm. So that's going to hurt in the morning, I suppose. <laughs> You're going to yeah. get a bit sore. I think that's so, the but next An yeah. interesting thing here is you said it couldn't find her trot, but... There it is. At the end... Yeah, it was there, and then she started stretching. Yeah, oh, that is that is if you can. And now the speed is like twice what it was. Yeah, but then you know when they trot like that down the long side of the arena. Yeah. Then they have to. We say going faster. Many of them will then start to kick off with their hindquarters because, you know, that's it's natural. So that is what we were trying there. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one is actually from the day after. All right, cool. You want to see? Yeah, yeah, I is do. Is it 51? I think it is. Yeah, because again, there's another saddle. And we have, um, she's using a, a bitless bridle uh, because the horse didn't actually like bits. But we tried in the, in, in the last lesson, we tried a bit and the horse was actually very happy with a the bit then. Now she's actually trying to lift her back. But then she loses it because it's it's tough. It was obviously too difficult. Yeah. It's hard. It, it's it's because it's like you have to use your muscles in a different way. Yeah. But you see that? She's actually trying to shorten herself up and lift her back. Yeah. But it's very difficult. It's, yeah, yeah. And, and then she must be allowed to struggle. And the, the rider is really good at praising her when she does it right. And it's and also uh, you praise yourself when you do it right. Yeah, yeah. But it also praise the horse. That, for obviously, trying. that's yeah. Yeah, look at that. Please do look that's at that. Great. And then she loses it. So you must you must allow the horse to to lose it and then find it back again and lose it and that is the uh, the only way that you can learn. It is more than difficult enough to ride a horse for just three days, and then you come <laughs> on to these guys, which have four or five of them. <laughs> it's true. It's not easy keeping them separated. Um. Um. No, I, is, yeah. We need to. Yeah, I'm. I'm just uh, trying to find out. Yeah, I. I think I just have uh, a couple of more videos. So well, let's yeah, that's discuss the next this. One, yes. Yeah. But let's discuss these ones that we have now. Yeah, just roll it again, please. So now there are several joints in the hind legs. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. If that's your right. horse has no joints in the hind legs or only only the lowermost one, that's not good. So now you can see that there's her knee. absolutely. 
even if it's pushing off more than anything really but that is absolutely fine it's it hits the when the hind leg hits the ground there's a bend in the in the stifle and the hock and the horse is trying to kind of close up that angle between the knee and the belly but not quite able yet you can see the abs are just as hard as they can you see they're on all the time that strip behind the rider's heel there mm -hmm. that stripe behind there yeah means that those muscles are working hard but they have been very long for a long time yeah so they're not short enough to support the horse in the no. proper position mm -hmm. and that might also be that the the attachment to the um uh to the not the ligaments the tendons mm -hmm. the tendons might be long as well yeah. Because they've been in this long stretched out position for a very long time. Mm. And that kind of, it, it is, you can't exaggerate or you can't pronounce, say enough about the, the difficulty for the central nervous system to try and keep the abs working when they are obviously too long, which they become during the pregnancy, mm. and keep the hindquarters engaged at the same time mm. because both of those sets of muscle then come into a position where it's almost impossible for them to do the correct job mm -hmm. and then you drop that that fallout and the length is still way too much and the hindquarters aren't strong enough and there's just it's so difficult to find that rhythm again mm -hmm. So, but you can see that sometimes she finds the rhythm, and you can see also that it involves being really tense in the in the like in the abs to call it that for the horse. Mm. And now the hindquarters are trying to do a job. You can see that the muscle on top is trying to do to do the correct job, but mm. the because of that the ab thing, the back still is too much dropped mm -hmm. so the more you push the more you push the wrong way yeah so and and also when the abs are not that strong if you stretch the top line um it, the top line can sort of be supported by the ligament system and the, the fascia in the in the in the back and neck yes so uh, if the horse is allowed to stretch it's head fo forward and down mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. then the ligaments in the back will help lift the back up. Yeah. And then he, he, she will find her rhythm. Yes. And then she doesn't need to struggle so much with her abs muscles. No. And and, and of course, when after afterwards, when she's shortening up more, then she needs more muscles. But then that's the part of... That is, of course, the training of the horse. That is on a what? Mm, yeah, true. So now perhaps we should um we can have a look at uh, some uh, videos that of um we're doing some backing up. All right. Yep. Um, like ninety six sixty one. That is not the next one. It's um we jump over one so to see to save that for the for later. You can see that when she's backing up, she's uh, walking backwards. Like uh, the rhythm in backing up the horse is is not to, supposed to be four beat. It's supposed to be two beats. It should be like a trot. Yeah. Backwards trot. Mm, a very slow back, backwards trot. But she's really engaging her lumbar back. It's a very good exercise yeah. for horses like this. And bending the knees much better sometimes. But it looks really difficult, yeah. She's trying though, intelligent horse, I think. Yeah. But in and it, then she dropped her head and lifted her back at the same time. You mm, saw the saddle pop. Yeah. And here she is uh, using a bit, and the horse is not uh, not um, used to a bit. But you see that she's got this this lipstick foam in her mouth. Yeah. Because she has been uh, riding the the rider has been riding with that that bit for some time. And the horse was really happy with it. Now she has to, to do a little more pressure and, and, and at her mouth because um, but, you know. Yeah, but the pressure <laughs> is mainly on the horse. I see. Yeah, yeah, it's not. She's pushing yeah, yeah. the, it's the not, horse. She's not pressing with hard. her hand mostly. Yeah, but um, yeah. So um, we can. There is another one. Um, but it's interesting yeah. to see here mm -hmm. when she's backing up. 
the abs are on and off. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, so she's actually able yep. to to differentiate in that. But when she's trotting with a rider or trying to trot with a rider is perhaps a, closer to the to the reality. There, you can see that. Yeah, you see some proper on, proper there. off. You see that? Yeah. And then the the rhythm was almost correct. Then in the end that and then she stops and prays the horses. But it, we're not trying to trick the train the horse to do it correctly. We're trying to let the horse experience this and mm-hmm. find out and find and so the horse is actually the one who who changes the rhythm. We don't say tell the horse to do it like this or that. We're just saying, can you see what's happening when we're backing up like this? Yeah, and the horse says it's difficult. Yeah, but try. And then the horse says, yeah, but then I have to walk like this. And we say, yeah, that's okay, but continue. And if if you continue, you see that suddenly the horse try as there. You can mm-hmm. see that was some steps there that was actually in two beats. Yeah, again. Yeah. It's very good. And then she got praised. So that is, then the horse is actually then training the new movement pattern. Backwards. Yes. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Makes it... Uh, different exercises are easier for different horses or persons, for that matter. So that even if you're, say, uh, say, say that kid with the porridge that he was throwing around, <laughs> right? Yeah. That will turn into using a knife to whittle things. Mm-hmm. And the knife whittling doing things will, art. will turn into doing some fine arts maybe mm-hmm. at some maybe someday, right? And yeah. and it's not the same exact movements, but they obviously have influence on each other. Mm. So that's why we Some change motoric. movements a bit. Mm. And then we try and, you, you know, you can feel that, oh, this works for my horse and this doesn't. Oh, cool. Mm. Stick with the stuff that works. Yeah. Uh, and then have a trainer say, ah, but you should do that too. <laughs> that's also a cool yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah, you so, got more. Yeah, we got. I think we got two more videos. Mm-hmm. They are small, so ninety-six four fifty-four. And now she's almost flying. <laughs> I think the the hindquarters are starting to try to 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 lift the front. She looks way more connected through the through the lumbar spine. Lumbar back, sorry. See yeah. that? Looks more like one horse instead. Yeah, three. yeah. And, and not, it, do, it still it's doesn't look two, like an amazing trot. Just so, of course, we are we aren't blind to that. But the back looks completely different, right? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It also looks like the abs are sort of working a little bit more on off. There's some uh, some change in them through the stride mm. you can see more muscles in the hindquarters and sometimes you can see the whole horse move in the same rhythm mm. yeah so and that's a massive difference from what it was in the beginning actually yeah and we've got still one more video but we've got a, a question from the rider here yeah she says what Maybe. exercises can be done from the ground to strengthen such a horse all right and i would say uh, if, if yeah, but I, you I, shoot first i would say Launch the horse, and um, and make it stretch, and then do some canter. So, uh, just before, or add on to that, calm first, right? Yeah. yeah. But point here isn't so. Uh, not imagine, galloping around. Imagine this no. this horse that we have seen now isn't stronger than it was yesterday. But it needs some coordination. It's the coordination work mm. and the relaxation work. You have to find how to relax the right muscles. And then when those muscles relax, it is possible to relearn the skill of moving. And that is a very good point. Because if you let get the stiff muscles to relax, automatically the weak muscles that has been inhibited by this these stiff muscles, they will start um volunteering they yeah. will like say okay now i'm uh, actually able to do do something here because the, those uh, bastards have been 
in uh, my way. Yeah, they've been in my way. Yeah. So take away the tension here, and then the top line will start uh, doing stuff. So you have to just let them do. Um, that is why I was saying lunge, because if you're doing the lunge, you're taking away the weight of the rider, and it's just like doing air squats, you know, uh, without the the weight. Yep. So so if you want to do something from from the from the ground, I think that for a horse like this, it would be nice to do some uh, some lunging. Um, it. Pella can do a lot of strengthening in in the handwork, but that is quite advanced when uh, when the horse's coordination is so so struggling. Yeah, you have to if you want to do that in hand, you have to uh, sort of replace the horse's central nervous system yeah. to some extent. That yeah. is, I'm exaggerating this, but that's an idea. Question. Yeah. And for such a horse, uh, for uh, training her coordination, would like the Gira Volta be do something for her to try on? Could. Could. But could. Yeah. Uh, but the thing here is that the um, the tendency for this horse is uh, to be. Um, too loose in a lot of muscles slash ligament systems. The Giravolta tends to loosen up things. Okay. And this horse is this horse tends to be too loose yep. around the hip joints, yep. maybe also around the shoulders to some degree. Yep. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't that's not where I would start. Yep. I would think the same way Hannah does. Take away the underneck and let them get go. the underneck off. Uh, and she would lunge the horse. I, I don't, I don't enjoy lunging, and I'm not especially good at it. I wonder if there's there might be a connection, but so I would probably work the horse in hand. But what I would would do is try to work the horse straight forward, mm -hmm. uh, on a circle but straight, like mm -hmm. dressage straight on the circle, you know. Mm -hmm. And then if the horse manages to find something looking like a rhythm on that circle which is the same as lunging, essentially. Yeah. Then I would move towards the fence mm. to use the fence as the outside aids yeah. that collect up the horse just a little bit and makes that energy lift up and forward. Mm. And I would feel, I will feel like the, the uh, I always think of it as, a, as in a parachuting thing, the, the ground, what do you call it? When you feel the ground coming towards you. When you oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that ground rush thing, mm -hmm. because you can sense that the horse senses the fence mm -hmm. and is starting to adjust herself in accordance with the yeah. fence. If you get too close, the horse will run away. Yeah, those feelings, right? Yeah. So I use that run away tendency, but I stay just far enough out to get a bit more lift forward. Yeah. But that's two things: relaxation first, and then some energy into it. Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah, I and was just I, curious if Giravolta yeah. does anything good to like this yeah. kind of stuff at all. Or, mm. yep. I wouldn't. Nope. Uh, and we've got uh, the work in hand stuff that you are doing. We've got uh, plenty of videos about that from before. Yeah, true. If you want to. Yep. And there is um, there is one more video and then we get some stills cool. about uh, yep. before and after. It's 9662. And now the horse was quite. Uh, we thought that she was starting to become a little tired, so we we th said, "Okay, let's just do this, and then we're finished." And you can see that she's relaxing. And that walk is actually pretty good. Yeah, and in and the walk is the mother of all gates, as the French used to say. And the knees are coming way further underneath. Hmm. And this is calm. Calm. And this is on avant. Mm -hmm. Now this the horse is forward. The horse is bringing her hind legs under enough and in such a manner that you can see the back becomes much more stabilized than it was in the beginning. Mm. You see that? Everything moves softly. And she's snorting several times. Yeah. And, and you see without being asked to do any such thing. Uh -huh. yeah. This is so much fun for me to see because this is 
actually the first time that I'm able to see in walk <laughs> that the back actually is lifting the rider. I can <laughs> I can recognize it in trot and canter, mm-hmm. uh-huh. but not in walk. But with I can see it now. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Yay Just for you! Six years. <laughs> We made one person see something. Yeah. <laughs> makes, makes me happy. And very, the apps are absolutely cool. different. The apps they, are working. Un, they, un, uh, un, yes, un, but also, un. they look kind of... Sh- the, the belly isn't there. Mm-hmm. And shall we, shall we take a look at the difference on still pictures? Absolutely, let's see. Yeah, let's see the before, like 96-24. The picture... This is how she was before we uh, did, did any training. Mm-hmm. And there is 96.75. This is how she looked after the, the last lesson. You can see the difference. What do you see, Pella? Oh, uh, Where to start? And, uh, and we didn't manipulate her at all. What I see mostly is that the shoulder, the shoulder neck connection looks completely different. Yeah. On the top there. Uh, and the musculature in the hind legs looks like it exists. <laughs> Can we see the, the, the uh, before picture? So that, yeah. So no muscle in the hind leg. No muscle in the front leg. It looks like the horse has been shaved. Because you can see so much more detail in the other one. And you say the the, 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 the horse has suddenly got muscles, but it's like the day after, so... Uh, yeah. So it hasn't. So there, it so is the, the nervous front, system the that front. has recruited more of the muscle fibers. Yeah, and moved them into a better outline mm-hmm. so that And the knuckles looks are in a better Keep position. Keep your head, head up and your shoulders back, mm-hmm. you'll look better. Just, yeah. Just saying. Straightening so up, then you look better. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Look at us. <laughs> there was quite a bit of difference in that. Mm-hmm. Also, the walk had become completely regular. Uh, and even if we didn't see the, that enormous difference in the trot, I, I've taken some still pictures from the videos. Mm-hmm. And there is one 96.82 that is before. And this is not a diagonal trot. Uh, Very not. No, no. no. <laughs> and there is a, the other one is 96.81. This is quite okay. It is not high quality, but it's very good when it's when you're thinking about the the um, the start. Yep. And we might we we can't expect more from a, a horse like that. She's been really good, and the ride was really good. Yep. And now they have this thing that they can continue training. Yes. This is sort of how you how you move the horse from outside of the training scales onto the training yeah, scale. Yeah, yeah. That is what we're doing the most, actually. Yeah. Getting people into the training scale. Yeah. And then use the dressage rules and you'll be fine. Yeah, sort yeah. Of. It's mm-hmm. not quite that easy, but you know what we're talking about. That was kind of interesting. So that was sway-backed Icelandic horses then. Yeah. Becoming less sway-backed and changes through the central nervous system. Mm-hmm. So by practicing different movements, that's what she did, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like backing up, but also just practicing walk and half halts mm-hmm. and trot and half halts, obviously, or trot or, and something similar to trot. And doing the tension. And then the thing. untangling thing. Mm-hmm. Which is tension release. a sort of tension release in the that feels like it's in the muscle, yeah. but quite often when when you do that to me, find some points here, I can feel like my elbow f- feels wonky. Or back in your scapula. Uh, yeah, behind my scapula, knee. I've got some yeah. muscles there that go. Oh, what's or this up now? in your head, the migraine comes. My teeth go funky. <laughs> the funky teeth. Yeah. Yeah, my front teeth goes funky every time. <laughs> I even got people who are feeling it down in their toes because you know nervous system fascia. It, they, you, we don't know much much about those things. There, it hasn't been um, explored enough. And then cybernetics is about the control in the machine and the animal, as it says. But very few people are studying 
what it's um, doing with in the animal that is humans and animals. Mm. Yep. So that is what we're doing. Yep. Magic. <laughs> it's too advanced for me, so probably magic then, <laughs> I guess. Uh, it, it All right. Sometimes looks like magic. Yeah, yeah. we're finished. That's it for today. Um, I hope uh, you guys have at least seen something interesting. Uh, we will be back with more stuff. We're working on that Levad thing. Yeah, we, you were challenged last time. Yeah, so I've been working on it. Uh, but I'm uh, currently working on my trot and it's getting really good. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy with that. Basic stuff. Bit of a three-year-old there. Um, but... There will be more work with that. Mm. Also, we are going to try and do some YouTube shorts. Yeah. We're yeah. Not, I'm not training. gonna be wearing shorts, but you know, short videos on YouTube. Mm. Uh, and uh, our tech guy has said that I'm allowed to hold my phone upright to do that. So, so that's yeah, good. The only way I can, can do a video anyway. Um, so we will do some shorts to show how you can do little things to tweak your body to become a better rider. Easily, quickly, but of course every day. And that's all for today, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything, anything uh, more fun to say. No. I'm going to start singing goodbye. Christmas songs if we don't uh, stop now. So thank you guys. Have a real nice one. See you later. Goodbye. Hi, guys. Thank you again for uh, watching our videos. If you like what you watch, we would very much like you to push that like button. If you don't like it, push the unlike button or whatever it's called. I've never pushed that, so I don't know what it's called really. Uh, and uh, of course, if you want to see more of this, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. That would help us massively. Thank you guys.